Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so that you'll be notified when I upload new content here to my channel. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you guys so much for coming back. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to follow me over on Instagram so that you can keep up with me when I'm not posting content here on my channel. If you have personal questions that you would like to ask but you don't want others to know that you're asking, if it is hair related, I can definitely answer those questions for you guys. So today is March 15th. I am 18 months into my hair growth journey and throughout the constant pictures that I post on my Instagram, I'm often asked the different steps and techniques that I have taken in order to gain my hair growth. So I decided to jot down a couple of things that I know help with my hair growth and I decided to share that information with you guys. So a little bit about my hair growth and um, how did we get here. I first initially cut my hair in 2014 up until 2016, kept up with my regimen and I decided to do a length, a length check and see how my hair would be if it was straightened and I caused heat damage on my own of December in 2016 so I decided to try and hold on to the hair to see if I can get it to revert back so that I would not have to cut it off my length and after nine months of trying different techniques and different protective styling methods and nothing helped I decided to chop my hair off again so here we are March of 2019 and this is just a quick length check for you guys just so that you can see where I'm at so as you guys can see, I have tons of growth and I'm not even at my two year mark. My two year mark will be September of this year. So I just wanted to share that information with you guys. I would like to say that what may work for my hair may not work for your hair. So even if you do try these steps and it doesn't work for your hair, please keep in mind that these are just things that I have tried and it has helped with my hair. On top of researching, I also have cosmetology experience, so I know a little bit more about my hair. Um, also, I do tons of research when I want to try something new for my hair, or if I have noticed that my hair is not doing what it usually do, I'll go in and I'll change up my regimen. Often you'll see me look down and that's because I have this journal here where I have jotted down different techniques and different steps that I have taken so that I can make sure that I pour out that information to you guys. So starting off, the number one thing is I do not use heat in my hair. I do not blow dry my hair. I do not flat iron my hair. Because I have experienced heat damage before, I just wanted to eliminate using the heat at all this go around not saying that I won't ever use heat again but just personally doing it myself I will not use heat I think in this 18 months I've only used heat one time and that was to film a video here for you guys to show you how you can quickly blow dry your hair in order to um, do a style but don't have the shrinkage a part of the style after that video I make sure that I plan my days in advance in order to do the styles that I want to do that I don't want shrinkage to be a part of, if that makes sense. Number two, you are what you eat. That saying for me goes a long way. What you put in your body plays a major role in your weight. It plays a major role in your health, and it also plays a major role in your hair growth. I noticed that before I fully accepted my hair growth journey and fully transitioned to being 100% natural, um, my hair did not grow past my neck. Although I did have heat damage and I did have color damage to my hair, but my hair would never go past my neck. Um, before I started my journey, I my last relaxer was 2011. And even after not putting relaxers in my hair, my hair still would not grow. And I simply think that was because of the foods that I was intaking. Um, I did a lot of fast foods. I did a lot of snacking, um, unhealthy eating in general. So once I started my uh, hair growth journey, I adapted a new way of eating. I don't eat fast foods as often, but I still have times where I do um, eat, but it's just not an everyday thing for me. I don't um, snack unhealthy. If I'm snacking, I'm usually eating yogurt, almonds, granolas, um, fruits, stuff of that sort. And also I just make sure that I'm not eating after a certain time because then it's just sitting there. So um, I typically take myself and I put myself on fasting restrictions 
where my first meal is 12 p.m. noon and my last meal is 7.30 p.m. And between 7.30 p.m. and 12 noon, I'm only drinking water. So I have this little jug here that I bought from Walmart and I try to make sure that I finish it throughout the day. I'm not the best with that because often when I'm at work, I kind of forget that I'm, you know, needing water. So I'm just constantly working and not drinking the water. But I do keep it with me in order to help with my water intake. Number three on my list is to exercise. So um, prior to accepting my journey, I didn't exercise as much and I still don't now, um, but I do go and exercise with jogging. When I say I don't exercise as much now, is meaning that I don't attend a gym. I have a gym membership, but I typically just go to the gym whenever I feel like it. Um, so there are different ways that you can exercise. You can exercise by going to the gym, you can walk, you can do cardio, you can do jogging, you can do in-home workouts, whatever you need to do to exercise. You can simply adapt that and add that to your routine. For me, I work in retail five days a week. So out of that five days a week, I'm typically getting my walk on while I'm at work. I have a app downloaded on my phone that's called the Health, Health app. And within that app, it calculates your steps that you take throughout the day. So on a typical eight hour shift day for me at work, I'm walking anywhere from 8,000 steps to 10,000 steps. So that's how I feel to get my exercise in. It's just something about the gym that I can go into it and I love it one minute and then the next minute I hate it. So me and the gym, we have a love-hate relationship. So if you have to get up early in the morning and do a quick cardio exercise in the morning before going to work to get that uh, stimulation that your body needs, you can do that, you can jog, whatever it is that you need to do, just include some type of exercise into your regimen. Number four for me is to not shampoo as often. I don't shampoo my hair but once a month and that's simply because after doing researching, I realized that shampooing your hair strips your hair of your natural oils. So why would I want to strip my hair of the oils that it's naturally giving off in order to help with my hair growth? So I use a sulfate free shampoo and I only shampoo once a month. That once a month happens to be when I'm doing my monthly protein treatments and my monthly cleansers to my hair. So however you would like to do it, if you are someone that likes to shampoo every week, try taking it to every two weeks and then going up to every month. It just depends on your hair and what you're trying to achieve. Number five is to rinse your hair with cold water. Warm water seals your hair cuticles, making it lay smooth. Smooth hair cuticle better reflects light, giving your hair the shiny appearance that your hair needs. That simply means that when you're washing your hair after you have gone in and shampooed it with your warm water, you want to close up the cuticles and the nutrients that you just added into your hair with cold water. So by doing so, you're giving your hair that moisture, that shine that it needs, and you're not taken away from what you just decided to add into your hair. I typically do it when I'm washing my hair in the shower, so I'll wash my hair first and then begin to shower. So you want to wash your hair in warm, warm water and your last rinse that you're going to do to rinse out any products in your hair, you're going to do it with cold water. So you're going to do that real quick, massage your scalp, wash it out, and you're going to close up your cuticles. Number six is to wash your hair bi-weekly or weekly. Um, for me, when I first started my journey off, I would wash my hair bi-weekly. Now that I have my YouTube channel, I wash my hair every week, once a week, sometimes two times out of the week. You just have to find what works for your hair. And by washing my hair, meaning I only use a conditioner throughout the week. I don't shampoo my hair. I don't do dry shampoos. I don't, um, I don't do co-washes. So it's just a simple conditioner throughout the week so that I can, you know, record a new video here for you guys or if I just simply feel that my hair is time for it to be washed. Number seven is monthly protein treatments. Now, um, I have two videos here on my channel where I do DIY monthly protein treatments that I'll link down below in the description bar so that you can check those out. These are all DIY friendly. These are things that we normally would have in our refrigerator. If you don't have avocados, of course, you would have to go out and buy them. But for me, I eat avocados on a regular. So if I forget to eat one, then it will be hold on to until it's time to do my monthly protein treatments. Um, you want to make sure that when doing protein treatments that you do your research and make sure that your hair is not protein sensitive And if it is then you need to find a protein treatment that is for protein sensitive hair 
Also, you want to make sure that you only do protein treatments once a month because too much protein in the hair can be very harsh on the hair. So for me, I set it out to do my protein treatments through the first of the month. So anywhere between the first and the fifth of the month, I set a time out to do my protein treatments. That way I don't over protein my hair. Number eight is to do a ACV wash. If you don't know what ACV means, it's an apple cider vinegar wash. For me, I take the Bragg's vinegar with the mother in it and you wanna dilute it. Please, whatever you do, make sure you dilute your ACV. Do not pour straight ACV on your hair because that is very damaging and that's not something that you want to do. You want to make sure to dilute it. So I take half of the apple cider vinegar and half of water and dilute it into a spray bottle and I spritz it on my hair, start from my ends and then work my way to my roots and my scalp and just to massage it. And that simply cleanses your hair of any product buildup that you have encountered over the month or months from now. Um, because I do my eyes once a month, I, it gives my hair a good cleansing for that next month so that I can go in and add more products. Although you're washing your hair throughout the week, you're not really cleansing your scalp with some of the um, washes that you may do. So by doing that apple cider vinegar, you're cleansing your scalp and you're preparing your scalp for the new growth for the new month. Number nine on my list is to massage your hair. By massaging your hair, you're actually stimulating that blood flow that your hair needs in order to move around and to do that growth. So you're just gonna take the palms of your hand and you just go in and you massage wherever you feel the need to do and you just go all around. You can do this while just simply laying in the bed, while washing your hair. I typically do it when washing my hair. They also have different scalp massagers that you can buy if you don't want to use your hand and you can just use that scalp massager when you're washing your hair. You want to do so so that you can help stimulate that blood flow so that can stimulate that circulation that your hair needs in order to grow. Number 10 is to make sure to use 100% oils when using oils. When I first started my journey, um, I would buy hair oils from the beauty supply store because they said 100% oils. After doing my research, I realized that those oils were not 100% and I started doing more research to find 100% oils. And I found out that GNC has all of the oils that I need for my hair. So of course, I had to do my research, find out what oils that I wanted to use for my hair, depending on what I was actually going for. My hair doesn't like moisture, so I don't have to really worry about the moisture part. But um, in order for me to just get the growth that I need, I take different oils that I buy from GNC and I mix them together and I use them throughout the week, throughout the month, however you want to put it. But it's typically out the week, whenever I'm doing a twist out whatever style that I'm doing I make sure to add oils to it and then of course when I'm taking down my hair I add the oils as well and I make sure to add it on my fingertips so that it can help with the um, growth that I need I do have a video where I have linked together all of the oils that I use so I'll link that video down below so that you can see if it's the oils that you need in order to help with your your growth um, those are the top tens, but I do want to throw in a few other things. Also, make sure to sleep with a satin scarf on your hair. Um, typically, you may think that sleeping on cotton is good, but it's not because when sleeping on cotton, you're simply taking the oils and the nutrients that you just put in your head and you're throwing it over into that cotton pillow. So you may want to buy a satin scarf, a satin cap, or either a satin pillow to make sure that you're sleeping with. If you have a satin pillow, you don't have to tie your hair up with that satin scarf at night. Another thing that I notice is I don't dry my hair with a towel. I dry my hair with a t-shirt or a microfiber cloth. It just helps with the uh, frizz and it also helps with my styling method. Um, and I want to say that's about it that I actually do to help with my growth. I hope this was very informative for you guys. I hope that if it's not something that you haven't tried, that you do give it a try. Also, keep in mind that when trying new things, you have to at least go two months before you can see that different um, difference that you're going for. So don't try it for a month and then give up because you haven't noticed a difference. Go at least two to three months and see if it works for your hair. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye!
just fine.